Amen. Well, thank you, Brennan and the team, for just an amazing job again. I just so much appreciate our worship team. And um, there's not a Sunday that goes, doesn't go by that I don't. Um, there's just a song that just grabs me and gets me emotional. So I just love our worship team. Uh, I thought, you know, I'd put them up against just about any worship team out there. They're just so fantastic. So I just appreciate them. And um, so, yeah, uh, good morning to each of you. I, um, I don't know if how many of you um, know me or know who I am, and that's okay. You don't have to, but um, I thought maybe I'd just do a little introduction. And uh, as Brennan said, Harlan Miller, uh, I'm at Freedom Hills uh, Ministries as a counselor there. And I'm originally, we're originally from Indiana, um, about four hours away, northern Indiana, Shipshawan area. We have five children and two that are married. And so just um, God called us into this ministry three and a half uh, years ago, four years ago. And just uh, how it's just an amazing story of how God uh, worked in, in our lives and what he did um, for us. And so just a testimony of what God did for us and just uh, thinking of, I'm going to be sharing a little bit of um, the ministry, sharing a little bit of our my testimony, a little bit, and and also just how how we can draw things out of the Bible that help us to understand our hearts. It's really uh, focusing on. Um, so we use caring for the heart uh, concepts that we use for counseling. Furman up here, he uses the same thing, and I believe he's been out. Um, training with John Regeer as well. I, I was out there last fall and just had a great uh, week with John. But uh, just uh, sharing a little bit, um, again, you think coming from northern Indiana, what in the world are these people doing out in Holmes County, Ohio? You know, I, I love this area. Uh, would I ever dream, have dreamed that we'd be living in Holmes County, Ohio? Never, never on my radar. But God had other plans for us. And so... Um, God called us into, into this ministry and uh, just the way that it all came about. And I believe the same process that we're going through here at church, uh, finding associate pastors, you know, had affirmation from different people in our church, you know, that affirmed that uh, this is a calling that God had on my life. But my plans were to start in, in Indiana. Never had... Freedom Hills in Holmes County, Ohio, on my radar. So, um, <clears throat> so just giving a short little ministry presentation. And by the way, this is this is Jimmy's fault. So, um, I'm sorry. When we uh, when we were um, when we became members here at Light in the Valley, I'll never forget that morning we were back in his office, and he had found out somehow that I had uh, shared a topic out in Iowa at a conference. And he, he stopped me and he said, hey, would you be willing to share about Freedom Hills on a Sunday? He said he's going on sabbatical. That's not why he's asking me. And I was like, yeah, right. Uh, but <clears throat> so I said, well, I'll think about it. And then later Wayne Raber came and asked me if I would. And I said, well, sure. Last week I was wondering why in the world did I say yes? <laughs> so, uh, um, anyways, so just getting into sharing a little bit about the ministry. Uh, so we are, we have a very small staff there. We have uh, five, five people that are on staff. Uh, myself, I am a, a counselor there. We have Kevin Troyer, who's a counselor administrator. Uh, so he's kind of my boss. He kind of oversees the, the operations there. And then we have uh, Mary Hirschberger. She is a single ladies counselor. She does a fantastic job with single ladies. Uh, we have Joanna Slaybaugh. She's at our front desk. She runs, she's uh, the receptionist secretary there. And she does an amazing job as well. And then we have uh, Betty Yoder. She's our part-time uh, secretary slash graphic designer. So if you get our newsletters, everything that you see there, that's her. And so that's a, a little introduction um, to our staff. And so... Um, <clears throat> kind of sharing a little bit. Uh, so for 
Uh, for married couples, we do a five-day intensive. So it's five days um, of intensive counseling. You would come in on Monday. We, our Monday session is from 1 to 4 in the afternoon. And then for the couples that come in, we have, a, we have three cabins on site. And you can kind of put those pictures up there of um, showing the, the front of the office there. So that's our office. Um, and then we have three cabins on site. And that's what you'll see there for our married couples. We don't house singles or premaritals for just logistical reasons. Um, but we do have three cabins for, for married couples. And so on a Monday, you'll, our sessions will be from one to four, and you'll get a nice dinner to take back to your cabins that evening. And we'll have some, some things that couples work through. Uh, one is a Taylor Johnson test that we do. That basically, it's a character and trait analysis test. And it really shows us a lot of who you are. And it's you answering those questions that help us understand you. And we also do a pain worksheet, which helps us to understand where, there, where there's hurt and pain and wounds in our hearts. And I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. And so just, um, we, are, um, we are funded by donations only. And I love that, that we can tell our clients that come in, we can tell them, they ask us, well, what is this going to cost us? And we can tell them nothing. And we have people that come that, that don't have a lot. And so I, I love that, that we can say that, you know, there, there's no cost. Um, because that's the last thing I want to talk about. In the office, I'm focused on the people in front of me, the people that uh, are hurting the same way that I was in my life. And I'll share some of that uh, here in just a little bit. So we, are, we do have fundraisers throughout the year. We have a breakfast. We have an auction. We just have that in June uh, just to help us uh, raise some funds. This year we have, I didn't put this on the slide, but we have a, uh, an event coming up in August, August 22nd. I don't know if there's any uh, diehard hunters in here, but there's a guy called Billy Moles. He's from Wisconsin, I believe. And he does Alaskan hunts. And he's going to be coming in. Uh, got an amazing testimony. He's going to be talking. We're going to have a dinner. And so just lots of door prizes and stuff. We have a fundraiser uh, coming up in August, August 22nd for that. So that kind of uh, wraps up a little bit about, um, about the, the, the staff. And, and again, just kind of how, how a, a week would look. The other thing we have... We have 120 acres there on our property. And so we have lots of trails. And so couples really come in. They enjoy walking the trails and just spending time alone with each other and with God. And it's just a, a very peaceful atmosphere. Sometimes we have people on Friday, they say, we don't want to go home. We just want to stay here. And so that's just an amazing testimony of what God has has supplied for us and given us, you know, the, the resources that people can come and just really have that peace. And, and I've had, we've had friends, it was just as soon after we moved out here, we had friends there, and I, I'll never forget this, the one, the one uh, friend we had there, he said, this, this place is anointed. And, you know, I know that feeling of stepping on the grounds there and just this feeling of God is here. And so, so that's, that's really um, what I have about, about the, the logistics of, of coming to Freedom Hills. And, and um, I love Furman here at the church. He does, you know, he, I think he does pre premarital counseling. He works with people here in the church. And I love that. We can never have enough people coming alongside because in our world we have hurting people. And it's a reality that we face. And I believe in our churches we have hurting people. And sometimes we, and, and you know, I've done this as well, we, we, kind of, we kind of put on our mask, right? And we go to church every Sunday, we, we go out in public, and we kind of put on our mask, and, 
And everything looks good on the outside, right? But what's, what's really going on inside our hearts? And, and I believe um, that is, um, you know, things that happen to us, we get hurt. And, and then we struggle with that, and we don't know what to do with that. So that's a little bit what I'm going to talk about today, and just bring out what, what the Bible teaches about, um, about that. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, a little bit of my testimony, and I don't want to go too long on this. Uh, I just want you to see um, what God did in my life, in our, in our marriage, and in our family, and, and the effect that that has. And I'm going to be talking a lot to you parents uh, as couples because I believe that's where a lot of this starts. You know, the effect that, it, that, a, that a connected, strong, connected, married couple has is, is so amazing. When we think about that, the effect that that has, the effect that that has on our children the effect that that has in our neighborhoods, in our churches, in our families, all this that it has an effect on. But you know, we have an enemy who is out to destroy everything that God created for good. I believe way back in the garden when God created Adam and Eve, He said it was good. He called it good. He created us in His image. And you know, when, when the enemy, when the devil, when he was cast out of heaven, he said, you know what? I'm going to go after the one thing that God has. The one thing that impacts the world. The same way that our slogan back there, love God, love people, impact the world. He's going to go after that one thing. And that's marriages. And that's relationships. And, and he does a very good job of that. We can look around us. And we can see the impact that that has. So just talking a little bit about our week that we were there at Freedom Hills. And, you know, I came into our marriage with a lot of baggage that I brought into our marriage. You know, uh, this is the other interesting thing. Uh, I don't know if how many of you know this, but I grew up as a, as a little Amish boy. So I was Amish, um, and a lot of you probably can relate to that. And I can relate to to, you know, our conservative culture. When I say conservative culture, I mean Amish, Mennonite, anybody in our Anabaptist culture, I think we come from the same thread. So I grew up Amish, um, and, and I'm not going to go into a lot of details because I want to tell you this. Today, me and my, my, my parents have a great relationship, and I'm so thankful because I have people that come into my office that don't have that. But I can truly say today, me and my parents have an amazing relationship. And I love my parents today. But there was a time that I couldn't say that. There was a time that because of the, the hurt and the pain inside my heart, I couldn't say that. <clears throat> so um, four and a half years ago, we came to Freedom Hills again Lots of hurt, lots of pain that I had in my heart had never resolved that. And, you know, people will say, oh, you know, the stigma against counseling is, well, we're, we're just going back and we're just digging up those, those things from our past. Uh, and, and really, you know, and there's a verse that the Amish use that they say, you know, you're putting your hand to the plow and you're looking back. And, you know, I get that, and I get the, 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 the gripe against that. But it's really, we're going back, we want to identify pain so we can take that to the healer, and that is Jesus Christ. That is the main point of counseling. It's not to go back and dig those things up again, because it's really not that fun. You know, I don't really enjoy going back and talking about what happened to me when I was a little boy. But again, those things impact us in negative ways. So I'm going to talk about um, our week there a little bit. So again, came in with a lot of hurt, lots of pain, lots of rejection that I felt. Uh, felt like a failure. Um, coming from um, 
different things in my life, again, being disciplined out of anger. I believe there's a correct way to discipline children, but when it's done out of anger or it's excessive, it can be very, very hurtful. Uh, so that was one way that I was hurt. Um, another way was um, <clears throat> I was introduced to sexual things at a young age, like I shouldn't have. And so that impacted me for a long time in my life, led to, you know, immorality at a young age. Now, when I grew up, I was responsible for that. And so that's what we want to understand. I'm responsible for my for my bad choices, for my sins in my life. But that was another thing that, that really, um, <clears throat> you know, just grew up with lots of dysfunction in our home. I'll never forget one day we were driving down the road, and I'll never forget wondering if my mom and dad would ever get a divorce. You know, as an Amish boy, how, we don't believe in divorce, right? But that was very real to me because of the dysfunction, the things that were happening. Again, today, mom and dad have changed so much, and they're different today, and I have a great relationship with my mom and dad. I'm not saying these things to make them look bad. I'm saying these things to bring out, you know, what happened. So, again, went through that week. Um, and I'll never forget Monday, you know, um, early in the week, we try to get stories. We try to get people's stories of what happened in their lives, good or bad. And then, uh, and so I shared my, my, uh, my story on Monday, and, um, but I didn't share everything. Again, sexual abuse is a very difficult, embarrassing thing to talk about. And, and there's probably people in here that can relate to that. And so, again, very shameful. And so, I'll never forget on Tuesday, uh, right before lunchtime, um, <clears throat> Uh, Kevin just asked us, Kevin Troy was our counselor, he just asked us, is there anything else that you guys want to share, you want to talk about? And I'll never forget sharing that part of my story and just how in that moment, how, how emotional that was for me to finally be able to share something very deep, very hurtful that had happened to me. And how, um, I'll never forget, the safe place, I felt safe in that moment. And that's where God, where Jesus met me that day. And so in that moment, I'll never forget Kevin leading um, my wife Mandy in a prayer for that. That thing that had happened to me. And that's what we do in the office. <clears throat> Again, where the, the whole point is resolving what happened. We don't want to go back and blame. That's not what we're after. We don't want to blame those people that have hurt us. That's not what we're doing. If, if, we, if we blame that person, we'll never be free of that hurt and that pain. And so that, um, I, again, my, my struggle and immorality didn't come until Thursday. I, I finally shared that with my wife. And so you, you think, you know, after going through um, counseling, you think everything is, is good to go, right? But we had some struggles because I had never shared those things with her. And so things got difficult, but we, we made it through only because of Jesus Christ and only because we, we prayed. We prayed that prayer that we that we learn in the office how to care about each other's hearts, how to pray through that hurt, through that pain. And, and again, I had hurt her very badly, and I owned that, and we took that to Jesus in a prayer. So, <clears throat> again, um, if you would just want to put up um, a, that verse in Luke 4.18, and Luke 4.18 is just so powerful I believe that that really speaks to <clears throat> the counseling process and, and really how important it is to, to, um, to go back and, and take those things to Jesus in a prayer. So Luke 4, 18, <clears throat> the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now, if we look at this and we look at the verbiage in this chat, in this verse here, it's so amazing because in the first part he says he came to, to preach the gospel to the poor. He came to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set liberty to them that are bruised. So poor, brokenhearted, captives, blind, and bruised. So those, those words there uh, really stand out to me because haven't we all kind of felt that way? You know, have we had a friend who turned their back on us and they, you know, um, or whatever it might have been? That, that verse there, and the, the, the part that I want to bring out of that is, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And I want to kind of give you the, the story behind this. So this is Jesus when He was starting His, his ministry. So back in Isaiah 61, we can read um, the same thing. Isaiah said uh, he was talking about the anointed one. He was talking about Jesus who's coming. And so Isaiah quoted this very thing. And so when Jesus started his ministry, this is what they gave him. And the scroll, he, he, he read that scroll and he read from Isaiah 61. And after he got done reading that, <clears throat> that scripture... He said today, um, here it says he closed the book, and he sat down, and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So basically he was saying, what Isaiah 61 was saying, what Isaiah was saying back there, is there's going to be an anointed one that's going to come, and he's going to be the healer. And so that's what he was saying there. I am the one who is going to fulfill Luke 4.18. I am the one who is going to give sight to the blind. I am the one who came to heal the brokenhearted. And I believe that, that the healing of the brokenhearted, uh, the brokenhearted, in, when I look that up in Strong's, it says to be shattered or crushed. And I believe that's, that's a very good description of what Jesus was saying there. He came to heal the shattered or crushed. Now, I believe that that's talking about our sins. You know, I believe at the core of everything, when you think of, of the fall of a man, it's our sins, right? It's our sins that Jesus came for. But I also think that that is also talking about the sins of others upon us. That is, I think, very important to understand you know, that's also the sins of others on that, that hurt us. And so I believe that's what Jesus came for. You know, he came for sin, and he came for our sins, and he died on that cross. And when he said, it is finished, you know, that, that day, and he rose up out of that grave, there's victory over death, and we can all have that. And we can have that freedom. And so that's really, I believe important to understand that Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And so, again, we use caring for the heart. Um, John Regeer, uh, he was a pastor for 24 years, and uh, he uh, saw a great need for counseling. And so, through his pastoralship, he, he started counseling people, and <clears throat> And so what's really at the core of caring for the heart is really loving unconditionally and accepting unconditionally, just the way Jesus did. I, I believe Jesus had, had great examples, you know, in the Bible of, of doing that. <clears throat> that unconditional love and un unconditional acceptance. How do we accept the person you know, who is living in sin. How do we do that? You know, and I believe that's very, uh, a very good question to ask. Um, and so it's very, um, I, I believe we have answers in the Bible. We have answers in the Bible for everything. 
And there's, like I said, there's different stories in the Bible that we could bring out, but I, I love the story of Zacchaeus in the Bible. You know, Zacchaeus, in his time, I don't think there was very many people that liked him. It says he was a tax collector. Uh, we could read that Luke 19, uh, verse 1 through 10. He was a tax collector. And so in his day, I don't think people liked him very well because he cheated them. I don't like to be cheated of my money. And I'm sure those people didn't either. But it says that he was a cheater. And I'm sure when he walked down the streets, people were like, oh, there goes that scumbag. And so <clears throat> in his day, people did not like him. And so, but one day Jesus came to his town. And, and Jesus came into town and for some reason Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And he went out to meet him. And it says he, he climbed into that tree. And, and Jesus could have done a couple of things. He could have kept right on walking. And we never read that story in the Bible. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus, and, or he could have stood underneath that tree and he could have said, Zacchaeus, I know you're a cheater and I come down and pay these people back. What in the world are you thinking? He could have done that. Jesus knew his life. But see, he didn't do that. He unconditionally accepted him and loved him right where he was. Now, I'm not saying that to say that we can ignore sin, but I believe that that day, and, and Jesus did this. He just said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down from your tree. Today I want to eat at your house. And the people all around were like, what in the world is this guy doing? He's going to go eat with this guy? And they complained a little bit. But that day, um, out of that came an amazing, amazing confession. You know, I believe Zacchaeus knew that day that Jesus loved him and that he unconditionally cared about him. Nobody else around him cared about him, but that day Jesus did. There was one man that did. And out of that came an amazing confession Zacchaeus said, you know what? I want to give half of my goods to the poor. And I'm going to pay all these people that I cheated. I want to pay them back four times. Wow. That is an amazing confession simply because I believe that Jesus unconditionally loved him. He looked past that, that person that nobody else cared about. He looked past that. He said, you know what? I'm just going to love him right where he's at because I know that's what changes hearts. And it did that day. <clears throat> and so I believe that that's very important that we understand that we understand that. And again, coming back to um, just the whole idea of counseling, I, I, I think, again, there's a bad, bad stigma uh, attached to that. And, but again, the goal is not to blame. The goal is to bring resolution through healing and through forgiveness. I always say this in the first part of the week. Uh, it's kind of like I'm, we're throwing a, a, a puzzle on my desk. And as we go through the week, we, we start putting this puzzle together. Um, and, you know, usually on a, on a puzzle, you start from the outside and you work your way in. In this situation, we kind of start from the inside and work our way out because we're really trying to put this puzzle together. We work through uh, the healing process. Again, that is simply taking, I can't heal anybody, but Jesus can. And it's simply taking that hurt, that pain that we've now identified, and we're taking that and we're asking Jesus, could you just come into this person's heart and could you just heal the hurt and the pain because it says he came to heal the broken heart and I believe he still does that today I see it happen in my office a lot not every week but I see it happen in the office a lot again sin is the is the the, the thing that separates us from God <clears throat> but again we if we heal resolve that and I always say, you know, again, coming back to the puzzle, so we go through the week and we start 
we start the healing process. We start couples about midweek. I start connecting them emotionally. How do we connect emotionally? It's through doing the opposite of what was done to us. And I believe there's, there's two types of trauma in a person's heart. There's the trauma of the, th- the bad things that happened to us, but there's also the trauma of the things that were not done for us that should have been done. And examples of that is basically, um, you know, in, in our conservative culture, I, I, I often say this, um, we, we kind of struggle in this area. And I, I know the Amish culture does this for sure. The, the struggle in affirmation, affirming a person for who they are and, you know, compliments, you know, feeling loved. Those are, those are the other types of trauma that we can have in our hearts. It's not always the bad things that happen, but the things that were not done for us that should have been. And so that's sometimes the trauma that we face. Sometimes we have both. And so, um, again, the, the affirmation is so important because it's really affirming somebody for who they are. You know, how often do we tell our children, I'm so proud of you? I'm so proud of who you are. You know, we're always told that, oh no, that makes, that makes us proud, right? But it's really affirming who, who, how God sees us. God is proud of us. God loves us. He created us. You know, in Psalms 139, I love that, that chapter. It talks about how God knitted us. He formed us in our mother's womb. We are not a mistake. And so God loves us. He created us. And, and He doesn't... You know, he doesn't make junk. And so, again, sometimes we have... Um, the other part of, of the, the hurt and the pain that we want to understand is there's also feelings that are attached to hurt and pain. You know, what happens when somebody gets angry with me? I'm going to feel something, right? What if somebody criticizes me? I'm going to feel something. And so that's the other part of the pain that we want to understand is how do we understand feelings and how do we navigate through that? And that's the part of, again, the, the connecting part with couples is, is that, is understanding feelings. You know, how, how did I make you feel when I said this? Because so often we'll, we'll step on the same pain that our spouse has, has been hurt with. And so that's when the relationship starts going this way. And we start disconnecting. And, uh, and so there's different ways that we do that as well. And we can get into that, but I'm not going to uh, get into that as much. But, <clears throat> you know, just again, when we don't feel good inside, we respond in negative ways. And so that's important to understand you know, take a depressed person or take a person, you know, who gets angry or whatever it may be. You know, that's a person that's hurting inside. You know, we often see an angry person or a critical person and we're like, oh, I don't want to be around that guy, right? And for good reason, right? And we do that. We separate. Again, the sin separates us from God. Sin separates us from people in relationships. Very important to understand that. But again, it's a person who's not feeling good inside. You know, I don't think a depressed person wakes up one morning and decides, you know what, I'm just going to be depressed today. I, don't, I haven't felt that way before. I just want to feel that way. Just to see how it feels. No, it's because somebody has experienced trauma in their lives and now that has led to depression. You know, I, I believe there's some depression that requires medication, that people need medication for that. But there's also, I believe, depression that, that if we try to understand a person's heart, we try to understand how they're feeling inside, I believe that that can take that depression away. And you know, I've been there. I, I have felt that way. You know, through a lifetime of, of just, you know, feeling like a failure, feeling like a nobody, you know, felt very depressed. And so I know how that feels. And so my story isn't the worst story out there. I've heard a lot worse in my office. 
But there's still lots of things that I can relate to other people with that I've walked through in my life. Again, I'm so thankful today that I walked through those things. You know, and you're thinking, well, how can you be thankful for those things? But it's very, because it helps me understand a person's heart. It helps me understand and have compassion for that person who is walking through maybe some of the same things that I walk through. And so again, the unconditional love and acceptance. Um, <clears throat> we start healing from our past and, and talking about you know the forgiveness. Forgiveness is always the final key pieces to the puzzle. I'm, I'm coming back to that puzzle again. That's the final key pieces of the puzzle. You know, we can work through the healing, we can work through, you know, and we know the, what the Bible talks about forgiveness, right? We know that. But how can we get it down here? How do we get it into our hearts? How do we forgive that person who hurt us really, really badly? But again, that is the final key piece of the puzzle. And I believe it's so biblical how that works, how Jesus heals the pain, and we forgive that person who hurt us. And that's the final piece of the puzzle. Uh, forgiveness is so important because it frees us. Uh, again, forgiveness is difficult. It's not easy. We all know that, right? Um, it's not easy, but it is what it does for me, not what it does for the other person. Forgiveness is, is, holds us in this, unforgiveness holds us in this bondage. We're in this prison, but when we, when we forgive that person, it frees us from that bondage. And so again, uh, the sin, the, 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 our sins, we, we confess that. And you know, I believe that the process is so simple, yet so difficult. You know, we heal, and you know, out of that, you know, I have people that confess in my office the things that they struggle with. And, and then we take that to Jesus as well. We ask Jesus, can you, you know, this person has done this. We want to bring that to you. We want to confess that today so this person can heal. And I believe that's the whole healing process is, is bringing healing to a heart, bringing affirmation, bringing the positive into a heart that's been damaged, and also that the confession and the forgiveness part is so important. And so I'll never sit there and ask a person to confess things in my office because I believe when we understand a heart and we, we do the things that Jesus did that day for Zacchaeus, it happens. It happens naturally because that person will then want to forgive um, and confess those, those things. And so um, really I believe that's how God designed our hearts. God designed our hearts to receive good things. Unfortunately, it also receives the bad things. And so, <clears throat> again, the last thing we want to do is put hurt on top of hurt. We don't want to continue to hurt people. Uh, and, you know, we know what the Scripture says about all these things, right? And it's, it's amazing how, you know, I've had um, <clears throat> people in my office who have been hurt by people that have shoved Scripture down their throats and have said, well, you know, you're this person, you're this person. Just, well, you need to change this. You know, and, and that is true. But I believe that there is a way to get to a person's heart that we don't damage them further. Because sometimes we can, we can hurt people by, you know, shoving those things down their throat. Not that it's not truth, but truth on top of pain um, can still be very hurtful. But we all, we all have good intentions, right? We want to help these people. Um, and so, um, so I'm just going to, um, again, uh, sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit of time for uh, people Sometimes we have people that don't want to come, right? <laughs> and it's always good when we have people that want to come. And they want help. But um, actually, I'm, I'm skipping forward a little bit. So the way, you know, to help others 
Um, there's a couple verses that I want to want to point out to you. Um, the first one is in in Galatians. Uh, actually, no. Uh, yeah, Galatians six two. And it talks about uh, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And I believe that that's so true, that we that we bear each other's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. You know, that, that's really what that's talking about. We're fulfilling the law of Christ when we help bear each other's burdens. And I believe that's really, you know, for, for I, my, main, my main uh, focus is, is helping couples understand that. How to help each other bear each other's burdens. And, and, and that's part of the, the emotional connection that I believe that happens in a week and, and people grab onto that sometimes and they, they say that's the, that's the piece that's been missing in our lives. How do we connect emotionally? How do we understand each other? How do we bear each other's burdens? I think it's very important. The other scripture I want to point out is 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 through 5. And this, this just happened in my devotions the other morning. I was reading through this and it's like, wow, that is so true. Um, 2 Corinthians 1, uh, 3 through 5. And if I can read it here. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we, we may be able to comfort those who are in affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in, in comfort too. And I thought that was just so you know, amazing how we can comfort each other. You know, you can comfort other people. You see hurting people all around you, right? How do we comfort? How do we do that? And it's simply by, by doing that. The comfort that we've, that we've received from God, the love that we've received from God, we want to give that away. And so I believe that is so, um, so true. And so coming back to <clears throat> uh, just how... Um, how this works and how God, you know, God did an amazing work in our lives and especially in mine. Again, I just had, a, had so much, uh, so many things that I didn't understand about myself and how this all made, started making sense to me. And, and so just, I, I, I'm just so grateful, you know, the work that God did in my heart and in my life. And, and that's why I just, I love what I do because I see God working in my office every week. And so, <clears throat> Brenda, if you want to bring your team up, I'm just going to share uh, a little testimony. And, you know, in, in all this, we want to make sure um, that people's privacy is, is um, that we understand, that we want, to be, we want to make sure that, you know, when you come to Freedom Hills, that we're not sharing things that... Um, that are private. And so I'm going to share a testimony, and I'm pretty sure none of you would know this, this couple, but just came in with a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. And, and, and again, how God did an amazing work in their lives. And, and the thing I want to bring out is the forgiveness part. Because this couple came in with lots of pain, especially the lady. Uh, grew up in a home where dad was, was very abusive. Dad was an alcoholic. And dad would, uh, he, he sexually, physically, verbally abused her at a, a young age. She didn't even know when the first time was this happened. Sad, sad story. Probably the worst story I ever heard in my office. And I looked at her on that um, Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever I got her story. I, I, did, I looked at her and I asked her, do you think you could ever forgive your dad? And she looked at me and she said, no. There's no way. Dad did way too many horrible things. 
You know, I couldn't blame her. And yet I knew what the Bible talked about, about forgiveness. And so I accepted that. I said, I'll accept that. And we went through that week, and God did an amazing work in her life. Um, because we came to the end of the, that week, and there's always a picture that I draw for couples on forgiveness and how that looks. And we came to the end of that week, and, you know, I felt pretty petty asking her, well, today, do you think you could forgive your dad? Because we worked through the healing part of it. You know, we'd, we'd unconditionally loved her and accepted her. You know, she had struggled with her husband. She had struggled with her children, her whole marriage. But we came to the end of that week, and so I asked her a couple questions, and I kind of felt like I, th I think something has changed. And it was through a book that I gave her that week. I gave her a book, and that book kind of mirrored her life. And through that book, we came to that Friday, and I, I finally asked her, so today is Friday, I want to talk about forgiveness. So today, do you think you could forgive your dad? And she said, yeah, I think I can. And I was like, wow, praise the Lord. And I just started crying. Because God did a miracle in her life. And I believe, I believe she forgave her dad. We think of how, how can a person who has gone through something that horrible forgive that person who hurt her so badly? But I believe she did. They came back for a follow-up um, a little while after that. And they sat down in my office and her husband sat there and he was just smiling. He said, you'll never believe this. I asked, what's, what's going on? He said, well, you know, most times when we went back to visit her parents, um, we would come back and she'd be a mess. For a couple of weeks, she'd be a mess. And I have to deal with that. He said, we went back to visit her parents and she could talk to her dad like she never had before. And she came back and he said, it was fine. I was like, wow, praise the Lord. God did the work. Jesus Christ did the work in her heart. And that's what I want to leave you with today. That's the amazing work that God can do in, per in people's lives. It's not me. I'm just a person who sits behind the desk and tries to understand what happened to a person's heart. To a person's heart who's been damaged, who's been shattered, that's been crushed. I try to understand that. And we take that to Jesus, the healer. Jesus heals physically. He, feel, he heals emotionally. I believe that. And so that's what I want to leave with you guys today. Again, uh, thank you for letting me share uh, about our ministry. Um, <clears throat> and I uh, just appreciate all of you. Appreciate you guys accepting us here um, at your congregation. And um, so... Have a blessed day. Thank you.